Various types of uterine growths are common, but not necessarily normal during the perimenopause. In previous episodes, I have discussed endometrial hyperplasia, fibroids, and adenomyosis. I'll add the episode details to the show notes in case you want to go back and listen to these. Today, I thought I would discuss polyps with you as it's something that hasn't been covered before. So please stay tuned. You're listening to Menopause Natural Solutions, episode 127, Uterine Polyps. Welcome to Menopause Natural Solutions, your podcast for all things perimenopause, menopause and beyond. Stay tuned as your host, naturopath Jennifer Harrington, explains how to use natural therapies to find your ultimate health and happiness during your transition. Hi, it's Jen here. Welcome back. As a perimenopausal woman myself, I have personally experienced the joys of various uterine growths. My history includes ovarian cysts, fibroids and polyps. Lucky me! But I know I'm not alone. Many of you will also struggle with these and I found that there is not much information available out there on polyps so I wanted to make sure it was covered on the podcast. Uterine polyps are common, problematic growths that occur in about 10% of women. They can be found in the endometrium, which is the lining of the uterine cavity, or in the cervix. They are made from clusters of endometrial tissue that extend into the uterine cavity. They can be directly attached to the uterine wall, or they can be attached to the wall by a thin stalk. They start to develop when the lining of the uterus isn't being shed properly during menstruation, hence why they are frequently found at this stage of life. Polyps range in size. They can be the size of a sesame seed or as large as a golf ball. You may grow one or many polyps at the same time. Symptoms that may indicate the presence of polyps include irregular menstrual bleeding, Spotting or bleeding in between periods. Heavy flooding periods. If you haven't heard of flooding periods, it is a menstrual bleed that is so heavy. It feels like someone has turned on the tap and your menses is gushing out. Polyps may also be one of the causes of postmenopausal bleeds. It is extremely important that any vaginal bleeding experienced after menopause be thoroughly investigated. It's also worth noting that not all polyps produce symptoms. It is possible to discover them on a routine scan without experiencing any of the associated symptoms I've just mentioned. Polyps are a collection of overgrown cells that should have been flushed out with your period. They are usually non-cancerous. Let me say that again. They are usually non-cancerous. But there is a tiny risk of malignancy. Malignancy is higher in postmenopausal women experiencing bleeds. But that is still only about 4%. Fibroids and polyps can be mistaken as they're both endometrial growths and it is possible to have both of them at the same time. The biggest difference between polyps and fibroids are the tissues that they are made out of. Polyps being endometrial tissue and fibroids being made from connective tissue. Fibroids aren't linked with cancer, but they are linked with similar symptoms as polyps, such as pain, heavy bleeds, bleeding in between cycles, irregular periods, etc. The best way to differentiate them is with testing. And the most effective way is with a sonohistogram, also called a histosonogram, or a saline-infused sonography. With a standard vaginal ultrasound, everything is flat, and it's hard to get a good look. But if that's all that's available, it's a great start. But if it is possible to get a sonohistogram, this is the better option. This is still an ultrasound, but the images are taken 
inside of the uterus and with the addition of a saline solution to help expand the uterine cavity so that its contents are more easily visualized. Although the definite cause of polyps is unknown, we have several contributing factors. I have broken this down into four categories, including hormonal factors, inflammatory factors, environmental factors, and medicinal factors. Let's start with hormonal factors. The most common contributing factor of these growths is linked with hormonal imbalance, in particularly elevated estrogen levels. During perimenopause, women can skip ovulating, and this prevents progesterone from being produced, and without it you have unopposed estrogen. Estrogen is a growth hormone, and without progesterone being available to put on the brakes, it can produce problematic growth. Next is inflammatory factors. Chronic endometriitis. Anything ending in itis is an inflammatory condition. So endometriitis is inflammation of the endometrial lining and it's linked with abnormal endometrial proliferation. Dysbiosis and latent infections are often the cause of endometriitis. You may have only heard of dysbiosis being referred to the digestive system, but every mucous membrane houses its own colonies. Think about your mouth, your sinus, your urinary system, and the female reproductive system. Other inflammatory factors include insulin resistance, obesity, and metabolic syndrome. These are other often overlooked causes of polyp development. They all cause systemic inflammation in the body, but insulin resistance is specifically linked with lower levels of sex hormone binding globulin, or SHBG for short. This Binding globulin helps to reduce the amount of available estrogen by binding to it and preventing it from being able to activate a response. So if you are experiencing insulin resistance, you probably have lower circulating SHPG and higher levels of circulating active estrogen. You may also have a greater risk of developing hormone-related growths. Environmental factors. Unfortunately, we live in a polluted world. Many of these toxins act as xenoestrogens. Xenoestrogens are environmental chemicals that have an estrogen like effect in the body and add to the estrogen imbalance and promote further growths. I have several previous episodes discussing where you find xenoestrogens and how to avoid them. In case you have missed them, head back to episode 61, Environmental Health. The final factor is medicinal factors. Long-term tamoxifen use may contribute to the development of polyps. Tamoxifen has an anti-cancer effect on breast tissue, but it may act as a carcinogenic agent on your endometrial tissue. Please do not stop this medication if you are on it, but instead speak to your healthcare provider about this risk. You may just need additional monitoring. HRT use may also be associated with the development of endometrial polyps, irregular bleeds and endometrial hyperplasia. Endometrial polyps can appear in postmenopausal women receiving HRT even when progestins are included. I can't emphasize how important it is to check out any postmenopausal bleeds. Once you have addressed all of these factors, it is possible for uterine polyps to resolve. But if you are having heavy bleeds or you're in postmenopause, surgical removal may be your best option. Please know about 1 in 8 women have reoccurring polyps. Removing the polyp is only part of the answer. 
you need to correct the underlying drivers of the original development of the growth. If you don't, it might be a vicious cycle of growth, removal, regrowth, etc. Some surgeons offer to insert an IUD at the same time. This can help if your polyps were due to a hormonal imbalance, but it doesn't reduce the other contributing factors. For the record, I am not against surgery. I myself needed a curette due to the amount of blood I was losing. I really believe you need an open mind and a plan B when it comes to your health care. I have a team approach to my health care and I highly recommend you do too. If you need a naturopath on your team, why not book a discovery call with me and see if we can work together. That's it from me tonight. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to Menopause Natural Solutions. This podcast contains general information about menopause. It is provided as a guide and it is not intended to replace medical advice. Opinions of guests are their own and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please share it with a friend.